Ascending Forward, message number 31. Conversations with the collective consciousness of the star seeds from Earth today. The Solar System, or M13. This solar system is known as M13, with one sun and 13 planets. In other words, the Cabal hasn't included the other four planets in their findings. This is because the truth of our solar system doesn't fit in with Newtonian science and the moons and planets that the Cabal have annexed. NASA is the Cabal's scientific arm, heavily censoring and controlling information so as to support the Cabal's agenda. Indeed, even Pluto has recently been demoted from a planet and is now classified as a large, irregular, orbiting rock. Newtonian science, together with NASA, present the masses with a fictitious series of lies and deceit, building lie upon lie with regards to all of the planets and moons in the solar system. And they do this to perpetuate their agenda of mind control with the human race and purposefully keep humanity in a perpetual state of low frequency awareness and fear. Most of the habitable planets and moons in this solar system share the same plant and animal life. This description is contrary to what Newtonian science and NASA states as they want to control the perception of science to suit their agenda. The Firmament The firmament in the Atlantean and Lemurian cultures refers to the frequency of the upper levels of the atmosphere. In those times, the firmament, which is held in suspension and is a higher frequency of water, acted as a magnifying glass so that all of the stars seemed larger and brighter than they do today. The firmament was modified and changed as a result of the destruction of Timat. The zero-point energy crystalline generators held in hundreds of pyramids all over Earth including the Great Pyramids in Egypt, provided almost unlimited power to both the Lemurian and Atlantean civilizations and held the firmament in a stable equilibrium dynamic. The climate, pre-destruction of time at here on Earth, was more stable and less extreme. The Sun Contrary to Newtonian science, Earth's central sun is not a thermonuclear reactive process that moves through various stages, ultimately becoming a supernova, exploding and destroying all the planets in the solar system, and eventually, over a long period of time, cooling down and ceasing all activity, ending up as an inert, dead, heavenly body. From this understanding, Newtonian science and its supporters also see the universe as self-extinguishing, dead and inert. Newtonian science states that the Earth's central sun is at the centre of the solar system and the planets in their various orbit distances are orbiting the sun. It is further stated that all of the planets are in an energy balance that is consistent and stable, and any variation is both minimal and predictable over long periods of time. This is only partially correct, and is only valid from a 3D perspective. In contrast, the Earth's central sun is a portal. It is hurtling through space at a high velocity following a semi-elliptical energy dynamic as it ventures through deep interstellar space and all 13 planets are following the Sun with the same elliptical energy dynamic. Visualize the central Sun and all of the planets orbiting the Sun. Now Move 45 degrees in either direction from this viewpoint 
and see the sun hurtling through interstellar space in a vortex energy pattern that would look similar to a corkscrew motion or a spiral. Now see all of the following planets with a similar energy dynamic following the same corkscrew velocity dynamic or spiral as together they all hurtle through interstellar space. In other words, they are moving in a spiral direction because that is the motion of the entire galaxy. All other star systems that we see in the night sky have a similar energy dynamic, all moving at high speed through interstellar space in a similar corkscrew motion. Therefore, an observer would view the star systems in the night sky with a relative consistency of location. We say relative because the vortex energy dynamic changes when the stars interact within interstellar space. However, overall, there is a consistency in nightly observations. In other words, every position in interstellar space has its own unique frequency, and as the Earth's sun and the solar system's planets move into new positions in interstellar space, the interacting energies form a collective new dominant frequency dynamic that may not have been available in previous cyclic positions, giving the opportunity for new growth and experiences. So this solar system is in a new interstellar location where humans on Earth have never visited before. All interstellar space vibrates with varying energy dynamics, within which varying potential realities can exist. What was possible on Earth a few decades ago has changed. Earth is in a very different location in interstellar space, and previously unavailable energy dynamics are now possible. Indeed, these changes and potentials are now playing out in raising the frequency of not only Earth and the entire solar system, but also this entire quadrant of the galaxy. This in turn changes the energy dynamic of the entire galaxy and beyond. It is with this same understanding that the races with interstellar travel capabilities mathematically program their advanced navigational computers to cross the vastness of interstellar space using frequency maps to locate the desired destiny position or location of choice. Mercury We have spoken before about Mercury being thrown from its orbit after the destruction of Timat. Mercury found a new centrifugal and gravitational balance closer to the Sun, therefore it could no longer sustain physical life. When Mercury was repositioned nearer to the Sun, it became impossible for biological life to exist on Mercury because of the intense ionizing radiation that is emitted from the Sun. Venus NASA will tell you, from the probes that they send out into our solar system, that Venus is a planet with a gaseous, hot atmosphere that is highly toxic and acidic and would not be suitable for biological life. To a certain point, this is correct. However, that is a description of 3D Venus. The Van Allen belt around Earth is the limit of the 3D matrix imposed upon the planet, and all of Earth's probes, reflecting the consciousness of humans, are 3D. Therefore, these probes give no reference to the 5D version of Venus. In fact, Venus could be described as the Goldilocks planet of the solar system. 5D Venus is watery, humid, subtropical and forested with oceans and all sorts of life 
with an average temperature that only slightly varies from the poles to the equator, 24 to 32 degrees Celsius. Both Venus and Earth, being closer to time at, were casualties of the immense amount of water that made up the oceans of time at, and were dispersed at the time that time at was destroyed. So Venus also underwent cataclysmic changes after the floods from time at, and was transformed from a mainly forested planet with small seas and lakes, inhabited by complex cultures and civilizations, into a water planet similar to Earth today. It does not have continents like Earth does. It has smaller islands and groups of islands with mountain peaks, and all of these mountains are forested. The Venusians adjusted to the cataclysmic changes 12,500 years ago as a result of the destruction of time at. It may not come as a surprise that not only do off-planetary cabal live in a luxurious, high-technological lifestyle on Venus, so do many of Earth's current two-party political leaders, the upper cabal's echelon, international corporation executives, as well as the British royal family. They spend very little time on Earth, they only put in an appearance on Earth when they are directed to do so, and they have portals and jump rooms from many locations on Earth, including from their military establishments. These portals and jump rooms take the above-mentioned individuals directly to the Venus that exists there today, with ultra-modern cities, luxury houses and hotels, super yachts, huge shopping malls, vacation resorts, and designer clothes and furniture stores that would delight the most materialistically minded humans. The oxygen level on Venus is double that of the Earth, and this is why many of these personalities, even although they are low frequency, maintain reasonably good physical health and well-being, as well as using the advanced medbeds that are only available to the privileged. The AI and transhumanism that is the objective on Earth by the Cabal is fully installed and up and running on Venus today with all of its social controls and a digital banking system that do not favour the underprivileged. This is low 5D Venus. Since the 1930s, all of the portals from the South Pole are linked to the Cabal's off-planetary annexes that include Mars, Venus and various moons. This is why, particularly over the last 20 years, so many politicians and well-known personalities, including many actors, went on adventures to the South Pole. Many of these personalities are the Cabal's cohorts or representatives and are increasingly spending more time on their next planets and moons, particularly Venus. All non-military aircraft are banned from getting within two or three hundred kilometres of the poles, so no civil airlines are permitted to fly over the poles. They will be intercepted and shot down if they do, therefore there have to be flight plans. The Erebus disaster was one of those incidents. The cabal on Earth today control all political parties, all sides of political arenas and all information. Every war and skirmish is under their control the outcome of which they choose to suit their agenda. It may come as a shock to the reader or listener that the Venus described above that is up and running today was all installed in the late 1970s after a 12-year battle that the Cabal waged with the peaceful 5D Venusians. 
The finance for this war and the military hardware and personnel were all seconded and supported by the military-industrial complex, mainly of the USA. The enormous capital investment using Earth's 3D monetary system and all of the various armament, including helicopters, tanks and missiles, and the subterfuge relating to the military personnel, as well as its enormous death toll, were disguised with what is known as the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War was not the battle against the global movement of communism that America declared as its enemy. There was a limited war that was being waged in Vietnam and was purposefully ineffectual, however, all of the resources were actually moved to Venus. The helicopters, tanks and personnel were all transported in jump rooms and portals. The soldiers would go through familiarisation and briefing for several days and then they were ready to go out into the jungles, supposedly fighting the communists. To be transported to Venus, they were put inside a troop-carrying fuselage so that it felt as if they were flying there. The fuselage would shake a few times. They may have had good sound recordings of engines roaring. And then three or four hours later, after a simulated bumpy landing, the doors would open. The first thing the soldiers would experience was the dark of night and a tropical heat, and then they were told that they were close to the front line. Most American military conscripts never physically saw or experienced directly their enemy. The Venusians have Lyrian-based DNA and arrived on Venus as part of their expansion. Some were aligned with the Nordic Pleiadian DNA and others with some of the Syrian races that had a more Mediterranean, darker-skinned DNA. These particular Syrian races are smaller in frame and stature, similar to the Vietnamese, and so when they were seen, the human mind sees what it wants to see and perceived this race as Vietnamese. It was very convincing. Many of the conscripts were spaced out on LSD and were mind-controlled with deception as most of humanity is today and they believed that they were on sorties and manoeuvres in Vietnam. As stated above, most of the land on Venus is tropical and forested, similar to Vietnam, and so Agent Orange, a highly toxic and carcinogenic chemical defoliant, was specifically designed to deforest the areas that the Venusians were vehemently defending. So Agent Orange was developed for the war on Venus, and that wiped out a lot of the Venusians. The Venusians were not militarily armed and were a peaceful species. However, when it came to an annihilation, they had to defend themselves. The arms that the Venusians used to defend themselves were seized from skirmishes, so in the end, the Cabal resorted to toxic chemical warfare. The small nation of Vietnam could have been taken militarily in days or weeks by the Americans as the greatest superpower on earth. However, the Venusians resisted the invasion with all of their might. They did eventually have to succumb to the military onslaught after a 12-year military campaign. Some of the high 5D Venusians, the survivors of that war, are here on Earth today, working towards the transformation of Earth. It is interesting to note that as many of the Cabal are low 5D, this may not reflect so kindly on the New Age version of 5D. Earth 
The Voyager missions did occur, and what was observed scientifically has also been distorted and manipulated to support the Cabal's agenda to keep humanity in the dark as to what is actually occurring in this solar system. Even the Hubble Space Telescope on many astronomical observational facilities are under NASA's full control. Virtually all images from around interstellar space are graphically manipulated, distorted and colorized, supporting the Cabal's agenda with cosmological 3D science. All of the photographs of Earth, moons and planets in our solar system are composites that NASA and their illustrators have carefully prepared, eliminating the visual effects of Earth's toroidal energy system. If these photographs were real and complete, they would show that first, Earth is not perfectly spherical, it is quite misshapen in some areas, and that affects the gravity dynamics in those areas. A real photograph of Earth would clearly show two toroidal depressions, one in each of the polar regions, a huge depression in the South Pole and a smaller one at the North Pole. As shared in Ascending Forward Message Number 29, all suns, planets and moons are self-energizing toroidal energy systems. The gaseous planets would clearly show the vortices' effects of the toroidal energy dynamics with depressions in their polar regions, thousands of kilometers across, and plunging into the interior levels of these gas giants thousands of kilometers deep. To see the real images would expose Newtonian science as limited and based on incorrect mathematical conclusions of flawed science. True images of the Earth with her toroidal depressions would also have such a spiritual effect on the viewer that he or she would trigger a recognition response that would elevate their spiritual awareness. The Cabal's agenda is mind control of the human population. Earth is the only 3D planet in our solar system. Hollow Earth Today, Earth is undergoing enormous changes brought about by the collaboration of many interdensity races working with the incarnated or walk-in starseeds. There are inner Earth civilizations that are also caught up in the energy dynamics of the Cabal's agenda. The beautiful Agathans are one such race, many of which exist in the deeper caverns of inner Earth, further away from the influence of the lunar 3D matrix that diminishes in strength as it passes through the solid structures of Earth's mantle. The poles are surrounded by forests and are the entry points into Inner Earth. Inner Earth is mainly hollow and the substrate rock formation that form the vast caverns are made from a crystalline luminescent holomorphic material that emits a light frequency energy. This light frequency energy simulates an internal sun and all of the multiple adjoining networks are illuminated in the same way. There are also vast lakes and interior seas with their own microclimates that are similar to what humans experience on the surface of the earth. Nature, in the way of fauna and flora, are abundant everywhere. Similar subterranean civilizations exist on other planets and moons, including Mars, Venus, Titan, and Ganymede, all having portals to access both the surface and other planetary destinations. Some of these civilizations even have subterranean intergalactic starports. 
Solar M13 is a very busy hub of activity with thousands of starships coming and going, either in an observational capacity or assisting with those races that are here as part of not only planetary ascension, but the galactic ascension of this universe. The Moon Earth's Moon, as described in Ascending Forward message number 26, is a satellite that was towed into position 12,500 years ago to stabilise the destructive frequencies as a result of the annihilation of TIMAT. A holographic image that can be seen from Earth shows the Moon as a crater impact damaged lunar surface. However, in reality, the surface of the Moon is entirely covered with damaged, mainly metallic structures, similar to air condition ducting, heat exchange coils, antennas, and all sorts of engineered conduit equipment. These are remnants of the surface engineered structures of a planetary sized biosphere built by the Arcturians and inhabited by Andromedans that was destroyed in the Timat Wars. The interior of the Moon has tens of thousands of kilometres of tunnels connecting enormous caverns of various sizes that housed a population of several million Andromedans. However, now are all unsafe to explore and damaged beyond repair. The moon is unsafe to explore because there are many low-frequency demonic entities inhabiting the corridors of the moon. The moon today is off-limits to all ETs, however, as shared before, a biosphere, Viara, is in stationary orbit on the reverse side of the moon from Earth and the Federation are using that ship to oversee Project Earth. Mars Contrary to NASA's deceptive lies, Mars does have a breathable atmosphere with approximately half of the oxygen level of Earth today and the surface of the planet has a diverse animal and plant life, similar to areas of the outback in Australia. There are scrub-like trees and plant life that has still not recovered from the devastating destructive forces of the Timat Wars. Mars is also volcanically active, with numerous large lakes and seas, with some flowing rivers and streams. The photographs that we see of Mars, taken by NASA, are in fact photographs of Devon Island in northern Canada. The orbit of Mars has not radically changed from before the destruction of Timat because of its gravitational relationship with the two gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn. There are underground dumps with jump room portals to Earth as well as to several moons in the solar system. Today, the most distant and next planet or moons of the Cabal is Mars. The Mitra, otherwise known as the Tall Greys, were a genetic creation of the Draconian races who designed them to be their slave race. The Mitra, however, eventually rebelled and destroyed their own creators. The headquarters of the Mitra, or the Tall Greys, are now on Mars. They were the Draconians' egregores, as opposed to the Alpha Draconians, and so the Draconians were destroyed by their own egregores in much the same way as the Lyrians were destroyed by their egregores, and a large portion of humanity is being destroyed by their egregores. The diverse cultures that existed on the surface of Mars before the destruction of Timat either perished, left the planet, or went underground into the vast caverns on the many subterranean levels. Today, Mars is the most militarily guarded planet in this quadrant of the galaxy and is divided into three sectors or civilizations. 
One of these civilizations is the Mitra, or tall greys. Another civilization are a strong, aggressive, mantoid species. And the other is the human cabal, with the arm of its secret space program and links to NASA. There are constant skirmishes and squabbling with this unhealthy alliance, resulting in kilometres of no-go areas. The sectors are separated and controlled by military-style robotic personnel, movement-sensing explosives, and surveillance cameras operated by synthetic intelligence systems. This uncomfortable alliance of three species coexisting on one planet is being maintained with their mutual ambition to control not only Earth, but other interests and agendas in the solar system. This mutual ambition is not perceived by the Federation as one race of beings trying to dominate another. Therefore, the Federation does not intervene. The Cabal's intention is to exploit and lower the frequency of more planets and moons in order to service their agenda. The Cabal are in full control of Earth and work diligently to keep Earth's frequency in a low 3D frequency with mind control and fear. Jupiter We have already spoken about Jupiter in Ascending Forward Messages 21, 22 and 23. Saturn Saturn is a 5D gas giant, and so it has no hard surface. However, as you go down through the layers of the atmosphere, it becomes more and more dense, similar to Jupiter, with plants and animals all swimming or flying in a gaseous dense atmosphere. After the destruction of Timat, Saturn's orbit around the central sun underwent enormous orbital changes and Saturn was moved much further out from the sun. Before Timat was destroyed, Saturn could be seen from Earth by the naked eye and appeared as a black dot in the sky. And putting aside for now the Cabal's influence on Saturn, it became known in many cultures as the black sun of our solar system. Saturn was then a lot closer to the Earth, and because Saturn is a gas planet, it did not reflect light as does a watery planet. Prior to the destruction of Timat, Saturn had no rings. The inner, middle and outer rings of Saturn are composed from the debris from the destruction of Timat that were drawn into the gravitational and centrifugal energy dynamics of the planet. Large physical pieces of Timat were also captured by the two gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, and pulled into the planet's gaseous interiors. The rings on Saturn are composed of billions of rocks, from the size of grains of sand to small moons. The Federation in this quadrant of the galaxy that are overseeing the solar system have their headquarters in the rings of Saturn, where there are intergalactic starports. These starports are very active, with starships coming and going from all around the galaxy and beyond. It is a hub of activity. There are many races from around the galaxy visiting Saturn, especially the rings, where there are huge mining operations. They are extracting minerals and elements from the rings, particularly gold. This is not monoatomic gold, it is pure gold, and it is extensively used and valued throughout the galaxy and beyond as an excellent conductor of electricity. Most electric systems on board galactic starships are made from pure gold for this reason and would be valued at billions of dollars when compared to Earth prices of gold today. Saturn is where the regressives, or cabal, 
focused and developed the frequency of Satanism that is playing out its end game on Earth today, the headquarters of which is the Vatican. As in the movie Star Trek, there exists the Borg, an intergalactic cube ship that is approximately 5 to 7 kilometers across and is a dark metallic cuboid structure constructed of a material similar to graphene oxide. This malevolent starship has six sides and is where the mark of the beast draws its nomenclature being 666. These satanic definitions and influences are demonstrated symbolically today and are still worshipped in the Islamic faith. In Saudi Arabia, at the core of Mecca, is a symbolic black cube that is worshipped and revered by the entire Islamic faithful. It is in reference to the cube that the Hajj is celebrated every year and the masses that gather for the satanic worship move in a rhythmic fashion, circling the cube, simulating the rings of Saturn. It is the ultimate worship of Satanism active today on planet Earth. Saturn has various moons, all containing humanoid life, one of which is Titan. Titan has approximately 80 interstellar species inhabiting the surface and underground levels, with intergalactic spaceports. The population on Titan live in relative harmony. Their predecessors, low-frequency reptilians called the Mitra, or the Tall Greys, were only removed in 2012 by the Federation. It was mind control on Titan that held it in a low 5D frequency that is compatible with 3D. Since then, a more harmonious level of coexistence has developed in a relatively short period of time. Many of the ET species on Titan are here to observe and assist with Project Earth and the Ascension. Tiwana Tawa Tiawa